Welcome back, Wolfpack. Verlus here. We're taking a trip from Kalos to Hoenn, and we're bringing Malamar with us. Malamar is a troll Pokemon. That the way that you evolve it in game, it's typing, just it's the first Pokemon to make use of the contrary ability, but it's a troll Pokemon in the coolest way. Because if we look at it, it just does a lot of really fun things, and in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, those things get a lot more fun, which is why I'm wondering why more people aren't running Malamar. That in the Oras Move Tutors, it gets knockoff. It's really the only notable tutor, but who cares? Malamar, a dark type Pokemon that likes to be really tricky in how it plays, gets knockoff. What else could it want? So you're getting stab, you're getting bonus damage on removing an item. You're, that's awesome. It's also going to be a physical attacker, so it gets what it needs. We can also look at Snatch as a potential um, t tutor move that it gets, but I feel that when you have a move like Topsy Turvy, it's better to just invert your opponent's stats instead of stealing them, and that's why I also don't feel that Taunt necessarily is the best option on Mal Malamar. Like, you can run Taunt and Snatch if you feel that your team, your um, idea calls for it, but overall it's just going to be about that topsy-turvy outplay because that's another thing that makes Malamar such an amazing troll. So the contrary ability, if you guys don't know, if the Pokemon has a stat change raised or lowered, it's reversed. So that means if I was to lose stats, I'd gain them instead. We've seen this with Superior, that instead of losing special attack, you get absurd amounts, but Malamar did it first, and it did it first with Superpower. Superpower lowers the attack and defense by one, but since it's Malamar, that means you're gaining defenses. That's bad, in a good way. Like, it's bad for your opponent, it's good for you. And then we can kind of play around that. That was thinking careful nature, maxing out our special defense, putting a little bit into defense, that way you don't get immediately blown up, it helps your setup against physical Pokemon, and then you're pretty much good to go. That all you need to do is get a successful superpower or two, use rest, sleep talk, and then hope for the best. That as long as you don't sleep talk like two rests in a row, you're still going to have a good amount of sustain from the leftovers and the rest. And knockoff, knockoff is almost never a bad thing. Even if you've already removed their item, it's still a move dealing a stab. And then whenever you do get superpower, it's like, sweet, now my defenses are untouchable. And really the only thing that threatens you is a bug type or fairy type move. And that's what the really interesting things about Malamar's typing, is that it's a dark psychic type. Weird, because it has no resistances, one immunity to psychic, and then two weaknesses, a four times weakness to bug, and then regular weakness to fairy. So this set is kind of like, just a fun little gimmick that can really get you rolling. That Malamar, you know, you're expecting it to do some silly things, and if a Malamar hits the field like this and your opponent isn't ready for it, or if you're not ready for it, I mean, it's pretty much over. That it's going to do a lot of damage before you can really react to it properly, and if you don't have a bug type or a fairy type Pokemon that isn't knocked out, or you didn't bring one on your team, you're going to be in for a lot of hurt. And then we can also look at one of the things that I feel is the strongest on Malamar, and that's just Raw Choice Scarf. That with that contrary ability, you want to be going as fast as possible. With that Choice Scarf, you got the superpower, yo. So, I mean, you're going to outspeed, invest into your attack, and as long as you just survive that first hit, you have decent bulk, so you have to play Malamar strategically, that you use it to finish off a low health Pokemon, that you catch an opponent off guard, that if you can make that kind of play right there, that's your free plus one, now you're going to be harder to knock out defensively, and that's really where you get rolling. Now sure, being scarfed into superpower might be predictable, but I mean some Malamars they might just have like a leftovers and three offensive moves, so it doesn't look like you're outright scarfed until something's up, and even then, like, they switch in and get a call on a ghost type Pokemon or something like that, you just switch out and you can regain your ground later. Also, Malamar, it has knockoff. So, say Mal Malamar comes in, you're still fresh on the item, you can bring it against a ghost type Pokemon, something weak against dark, knockoff, do a huge amount of damage, because I mean, it's still stab, it's still removing the item, and it might not get raw one hit KOs, even on a super effective hit, but it's still a really nice thing to have. And then Destiny Bond. I'm a huge fan of Destiny Bond on Malamar. Malamar, say, took some hits, already scored a KO earlier. You had to switch it out because they, like, had a very threatening play against you. Bring it back in, Choice Scarf Destiny Bomb. They're not going to expect it. It's going to outspeed most Pokemon, so you're good to go. Like, the way that the speed breaks down on Choice Scarf is you speed tie only at level 50 with a 135 base speed Pokemon. Just because the way that, like, there's a speed difference between level 50 and level 100. So with the Choice Scarf, it brings you up to 205.5 speed. Pokemon rounds it down. 205 is the 135 on a um, speedy nature. So, I mean, you at least have a speed tie there, and you outspeed everything else. That the amazing thing about this set is that you outspeed and one-hit KO Greninja. So, it's a really cool Greninja check, and potentially counter if you, like, get them to predict into a bad move and they don't have enough damage, because Malamar 
And it also does have countering potential, like say you predict the Dark Pulse. You bring in Malamar, that means Greninja still stays Dark Typing, and you just use Super Power, you outspeed it, you catch it off guard, you blow it up, and that's kind of how you win with Malamar right there. So, a lot of cool playmaking potential, just a little, takes a little bit to get going, you can use it to maybe score 1-2 KOs, save it for that Destiny Bond, and really make some work happen, and then Psycho Cut, just coverage, you never know when you're going to need it, it's Stab, it still does pretty well. So overall, you know, this set, it can get going, and it has like a lot of really cool potential against frail Pokemon early, and then it can ramp up against some really strong Pokemon later, and then we might as well just talk about a double set, that Malamar is really good at Trick Room, that, well, I was actually thinking we don't need Careful Nature, we need Sassy Nature on this one, that way you're going to be as slow as possible, and it's just going to be really nice, that Trick Room, set that up, now your superpowers are going to have, like, effective speed, that you're going to be the fastest thing on the field, and you're also supporting for your other Trick Room Pokemon, so Mega Mawile, maybe a Meowstic, that way you can support each other, because the Prankster doesn't really affect, isn't affected by Trick Room, and then you can kind of do whatever, or any other really awesome Trick Room Pokemon, Mega Slowbro. The Trick Room options are endless, and it's kind of like its own little metagame that I can't really talk about here. But yeah, then you, you set up superpowers. You have a speedy Destiny Bond. You can use Topsy Turvy as an option, because say you set up Trick Room, it's like, oh, they, they led Mega Kangaskhan, and they got a Power Punch off on you. Well, you Topsy Turvy them, or some kind of Pokemon setting up Dragon Dance, Swords Dance. They're, they're dancing and gating stats. You're just going to flip that upside down. And that's like a really cool thing right there. So this is kind of like pseudo offensive supportive in a weird way that, you know, it's still a defensive set, still trying to run as tanky as possible. That way you can absorb those hits, get the trick room. You know, with the Citrus Bear, you're a three hit KO. So that means you're going to take that hit. Now you're going to be faster. So you're just throwing out superpowers and eventually you're going to make something hurt. You finish off with a Destiny Bond while your other Pokemon is also doing work. So and that's the cool thing about doubles. It's all about the distractions and diversions. And one cool thing I want to know about Topsy Turvy is it's also kind of like a Mega Sableye counter. Because Topsy Turvy bypasses Magic Bounce and then it flips Sableye's like stats. Now it'll have no special attack and it'll be forced to switch or something. Now while Malamar really can't capitalize on it with its moveset, Topsy Turvy can be used in singles. You know, you have hit point bolt kind of idea. Maybe a Chesto Resto, Topsy Turvy, uh, Knockoff, and Superpower. That can get you going pretty well. So it's just kind of a lot of things that uh, Malamar can do. As for the other abilities, I really like the idea of Infiltrator. Problem is Malamar, it's just, it's built to be that contrary Pokemon. Maybe you could be one of the 1% that use Infiltrator, and you can kind of use that to, you know, set up Toxic, set up Taunts through Sub, kind of like really shut down your opponent's leads in a surprising way. But other than that, it's always going to be about that contrary. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and that's how we use Malamar and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire.